Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Life Reimagined. As you can see, spring has finally arrived in the Algarve, which means we have made it through the first winter living off-grid in our tiny house here on our land in Portugal. So let's first start with the caravan. Um, I think all in all, the winter has been a lot harder than we expected, being completely honest. I think we knew it was going to be tough, but um, it felt like, and what everyone has been saying, an exceptionally wet and exceptionally cold winter. Um, but overall, the caravan has worked pretty well. Um, it doesn't really have any insulation, so obviously it does get very cold in there overnight. We are very happy that we got a little gas heater and because it's a very small space, it heats up within like half an hour, 40 minutes, the whole place is really warm. So we've been so, so grateful for having this. But obviously we're not having this on all night. So we wake up in the morning and there were nights where we had minus one, minus two degrees Celsius outside, which meant we had about three to four degrees inside the caravan. It's probably only been five or six nights, but those mornings it was pretty tough to get out of bed and we had to fight over who was going to get up first and put the fire on and then the next person would get up um, but yeah so overall um, it was definitely some very very cold mornings but as I said as soon as we put the fire on and um, within half an hour 45 minutes it did um, heat up very very quickly and then it was actually quite cozy and comfy inside so overall, we've really enjoyed living in our tiny house the last nine months. We are very happy with the renovation work that we've done, how we laid everything out. I think the space is working really, really well. Um, the kitchen is really working well. We have some space where we can also work. Um, the composting toilet has been working great. I think that's been one of the biggest surprises for us because we did we were a bit skeptic at first um, if, if that would really work and it wouldn't smell and it's been absolutely brilliant. It really doesn't smell super simple to use. Um, so yeah, that's been, been a real surprise to us. And yeah, overall we've, we've really enjoyed the first nine months living off grid here in Portugal. If I had to say what was the toughest part, I think it's the space. Um, we're having 28 square meters, but we live in there, we work in there. And because of COVID and lockdown, we couldn't really leave. Um, and then when the weather was bad and it was really, really muddy and we couldn't really go outside and spending days at a time inside, those were the moments where it did get a little bit tough. But this has kind of led to a really, really positive thing and was the reason why we decided to build this deck um, to first of all, get us out of the mud, um, kind of raise us up a little bit and also just give us a little bit more outside space that we can use. Um, especially in the summer, this is going to be great, but even in the winter, having a bit of a roof over it and being able to use the outside space a little bit more has been absolutely fantastic. Our solar system is still working pretty well. Um, we did experience though over the winter with the shorter days, more gray days, um, that it really isn't quite big enough to get us through those like cloudy days if we have three or four cloudy days at once. Um, so we did have to get a generator and we did have to supplement with the generator for a few hours every couple of days um, just to make sure that we have enough electricity. Um, another thing that we did is, for example, our fridge is taking some of the, like, the most energy really. Um, we started to turn that all off overnight, um, which was fine anyway because it was quite cool. Um, so yeah, we definitely, if we would do the solar system again, probably oversize the system a little bit more. Um, so that we can make sure that we're safe in the winter and we wouldn't have to supplement with a generator. Now that spring has arrived, we decided to finally fulfill a dream of ours and get some more family members onto the farm and we got some chickens. We also decided to build this chicken tractor um, we filmed it all for you guys and wanted to make a separate video, but somehow we accidentally uh, deleted the footage. Sorry, my fault. So anyway, we built this kind of chicken, chicken tractor. So you can pick it up here like this and move it around. Um, and that means that we can have the chickens in one place and then every couple of weeks we can move the chickens over to a different place and they can roam in a different area. 
Unfortunately, Willow has got a thing for birds and she was trying to chase them around and we're not sure what she would do if she would actually try and kill them. So we've got this kind of fence. Um, it's a bit of a temporary setup, but at least that way we can separate them a little bit. And hopefully they will get used to each other and maybe in a few months she will be fine with them. But for now, this is just a bit safer. Water was actually one of the things we had the biggest problems with. Um, at the end of the summer, the well ran completely dry. So we did have to get some water delivered in, put into big IBC tanks to get us through until the winter. And then we thought, okay, the winter we will be fine. There will be rain, plenty of water. The well will be refilling. Uh, and that was the case, but unfortunately we had too much water. So because the land is on a slight slope, all the water comes down here and the well got completely flooded in the winter, which means that all the kind of runoff surface water also ran into the lake, into the well. And we weren't quite sure how safe that is then to drink. We didn't want to ruin our filters. So again, we had to use other water temporarily. We started to rebuild the walls of the well so that the water wouldn't run into it. Um, and yeah, we're definitely gonna have to figure out how we're gonna do this next winter to avoid this problem again. So this is a new project that we are just starting. Um, we want to put a big vegetable garden here where we can grow lots and lots of veggies for the summer um, to feed ourselves. We've only just started and we're gonna make a detailed video on how we're doing this and keep you up to date on that. What's been really amazing to see is how these, this hill has transformed after we've terraced it. So in um, October last year, we've shaped it all uh, and we put out lots and lots of different seeds and it was completely brown. It looked so sad and now it's just blooming with these lupines and it just looks gorgeous. It's amazing. <laughs> The best thing about the terraces though is that they actually work and help divert the water into our lake. Let me show you. Look at this. This was completely empty in the fall last year. It's been absolutely amazing to see how the lake started to fill with water. And also then the wildlife that came with it. We have lots and lots of frogs in the lake. And also the other day, we just saw a couple of turtles, which has been super exciting. It's been absolutely amazing to see the changes on the land and how the few things that we've done already completely transformed the land. So this has really given us, given us more motivation. Um, despite all the difficult things and all the bad news we had about the building permit, this is really giving us the motivation to continue with this project. Now, of course, we need to be conscious and careful of how much more money we're spending here on this land until we know what's going on with the building permanent, if we ever can build what we want to build. But we do have a few smaller projects that we still really, really like to do and that we will put all our energy into for the next few months. Um, for example, that's our vegetable garden. Um, but we also want to start and plant at least some trees to get a head start. So yeah, there will be some great content coming your way very soon, hopefully. I would also like to take this opportunity to say thank you for all the comments and all the recommendations received on our last video where we spoke about the problems we're having with our building permit. We've been absolutely overwhelmed with the response and the ideas and recommendations we have received and how much every one of you is trying to help. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for this. We've really, really appreciate it. And we're so grateful for this community here on YouTube. So yeah, that's it for this week. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, any comments, leave them below. If you want to continue following our journey, then subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And yeah, we hope to see you here next time. How could you?
could you lock me in? Oh yeah, I should probably go there, right? Ha <laughs> ha 